So, I'm a little bit addicted to PUBG, which got me thinking, would a game like this ever have been possible back in the 16-bit days of the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo? And I don't mean a game that looks as good as PUBG, as that clearly wouldn't be possible, but one that plays like PUBG and has the same feel, or at least a similar experience. So, starting with the basics, how would the game look? 3D really isn't an option on 16-bit consoles. It could just about scrape by with very basic 3D, like this cheeky prototype I did for Mickey Mania 2, but it's not going to cut it for a game like PUBG. We could try isometric, like this lovely retro PUBG image by Gas13, but the view of your character would be constantly blocked from this viewpoint without a huge amount of layer swapping. Sonic 3D was hard enough to get right, and this is another level completely. So top-down is probably the way to go. Early arcade games like Commando did a pretty good job of depicting the kind of action you'd get in PUBG, but I think you'd need more space around you, so the camera should probably be further out than this. 16-bit hardware like the SNES could just about rotate the screen using Mode 7, which could be an interesting option, especially for the skydiving in at the start. But unlike this arcade game, consoles like the SNES couldn't rotate and scale any sprites which would mean animation frames for every direction and every size for everything that moves in the game. So not really a viable option. So that leaves us with a scrolling screen and smaller characters, so we have a bit of room. A little bit like this old arcade game. It means you can have vehicles without them filling the screen, and plenty of anticipation of where your opponents might be. So we can go with a graphic format like this, but what about making the game feel like PUBG? There are plenty of 2D PUBG games around at the moment, but none of them feel like PUBG. And I think the main reason for that is that PUBG is all about stealth, surprise, sneaking around and using cover. None of the 2D versions I've seen manage that at all well. So I think to handle stealth, you need to imitate the field of view that PUBG gives you. The 2D overhead view naturally shows you everything in the area, which removes any mystery about where your opponents might be hiding but I think there is a way of restricting your view that maps perfectly onto the way the 3D version of PUBG plays. Here's a top-down view of a small section of map. In the current 2D versions of PUBG, you would be in the middle of the screen and any opponents nearby would be shown on screen just like any other arcade shooter. But this just isn't PUBG in my opinion. So in taking this retro, I would try and implement a line of sight system. Here's what I mean. So you would always be aware of areas you can't see, and opponents wouldn't be visible unless they were within the line of sight of the player. This is kind of like the third person camera in PUBG. To get more of the first person camera effect, you would also hide things based on the direction you were facing as well, but I prefer third person in any case, and I think this would work well for the retro version. So this could easily be implemented to get a retro feel version of the game on modern hardware but getting something that complex running on an actual 16-bit console like the Sega Genesis and at a decent frame rate would be nearly impossible. It involves lots of maths and then a lot of drawing polygons, which would be very slow. So is there a way of getting this kind of effect running? Well, let's see how it looks if we drop the resolution of the shadows cast by the line of sight. Now, I think this still looks acceptable, and if we match the resolution to the tile size on the Sega Genesis, then we can even use the Playfield Shadow Mode to create the effect. So now we can draw it, but we still need to calculate what's in shadow for the 1024 tiles that cover the Playfield. So we could try and do all the maths, and then draw using tiles as pixels. That could work, as we are doing 64 times less pixel drawing that way, but might still be too slow. So another approach could be to store where all the shadows are for every tile location that the player could be standing. So if he stood in tile location 1, we pre-calculate where every shadow on the screen would be, and then the same for location 2 and so on for all 1024 locations on screen. This seems crazy, but each tile just needs to know if it's in shadow or not, and that can be stored in just one bit. So a whole screen full of shadows would take just 128 bytes to represent. Multiply that by the 1024 tile positions our character could be in, and we would use 128k of cartridge space. But that's just for one screen. If the map was say 32 by 32 screens in size, that would be 1024 screens, which would then need a total of 128 megabytes to store. Fine for modern consoles, not good for a console with a 4 megabyte cartridge size. However, a lot of the screens wouldn't have shadows when you're out in the desert and away from buildings, or maybe just one or two shadows nearby. And even when the screen is full of shadows like this, they don't change much when you move to adjacent tiles. So there are lots of compression methods that could really reduce how much memory this would take. 
and maybe that could get it down to a manageable size. Alternatively, we could use the fact that there aren't that many different sizes of object. On this screen, for instance, there are only three different building sizes, and each building of the same size casts the same shadow. So we could store how a building's shadow looks from all the different tiles around it, and then build up the shadows for a screen by overlaying the different shadows on top of each other. This would mean that each building would take 128k uncompressed, meaning you could get 8 different building sizes into 1 megabyte with no compression at all. And if you needed bigger sizes, you could even build them up from combining smaller building shadows in blocks next to each other. Throw in some compression, and I'd be stunned if you couldn't get it all into a couple of hundred k. Finally, an approach that could build on this idea would be as follows. Every shadow for a building can be represented as a single four-sided polygon. So we could store the four corner coordinates for every tile location around it. This would take a total of 8 bytes per shadow, so for 1024 tiles that would take around 8k. We could then have 20 or 30 different building sizes in just a couple of hundred k, but they would probably be slower to draw as you'd have to plot out the polygon that covers those points, but the memory saving is great. Whichever technique you'd use, you'd end up with a shadow map for the screen to show the player where they can see, and what they can see. Then when you draw the opponents, you just have to check the tile they are stood on, and if it's in shadow, you don't draw the enemy. So that's stealth covered to some degree, but what about the sound design so critical to PUBG? Or the parachuting in? Or networking on a 16-bit console? It's too much to cover in one video, so if you'd like me to continue, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you're any good at coding and want to try any of this, be sure to let me know how you're getting on. As always, please like or subscribe, and hopefully we can continue this subject soon. Till then, bye bye.